but we have so many exciting things on this slate. I can't wait. We're just really proud of what we're creating. <laughs> Orchestrated reality show. My husband is loving it too. Like enough, enough of the pain, enough of the, the suffering. Here's the deal now. Harry and Meghan are like spoiled milk in the fridge. Nobody wants a whiff, let alone a taste. The last month just proved it. Meghan is staging paparazzi walks just to stay relevant. And her agents over at William Morris can only get her a one second spot in the hockey commercial. I mean, blink and you would have missed it. Endgame, the book by Omid Scooby, just turned her rebrand tour into Texas Roadkill. And Princess Catherine defeated a wannabe without even lifting a finger. Oh, and did I forget to mention, Hollywood just certified the couple as losers. And to top it all off, Harry lost a case in court and he was snubbed by the royal family. So the only thing he's going to be doing for Christmas dinner is to learn how to carve up a tofurkey roast. Game over. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. What's going on, everybody? Meghan and Harry's vision boards don't seem to really work anymore. Forget about all the public polls and the newspaper headlines hunting for clicks. Money talks and bullshit walks. Endgame by Brand Sussex's chief suck-up, Omid Scooby, has flopped. To be fair, whatever side you're on, whatever you think about the truth, the sales of that book have been an absolute disaster, haven't they? 9,000 in, in the United States, 6,000 in the UK. It is a disaster. After only two weeks being out, the book is already in the bargain bin, on sale at half price. But you ask why? Because nobody cares about Mr. and Mrs. Has Been Never Was, let alone a book that's peddling tall tales, especially from a man with zero credibility. Did I tell you that Scooby, when he did interviews for his very first Megan the Martyr book called Finding Freedom, that man flip-flopped more times than the ginger handbag has rolled over on his belly when ordered to by she who must be obeyed. But did you speak with Harry and Meghan directly? No, we didn't speak with Harry and Meghan directly. They didn't cooperate with the book, and there's certainly no secret off-the-record conversations that have taken place. You made the whole thing up. Scobie up the ante in Endgame. He released the two names from the royal family members who allegedly made racist comments about the couple's child. The very same names that the Megans promised they'd never share with anyone. A couple of things. You talk about accountability. Mm. In the Oprah interview, you accuse members of your family of racism. You don't even, well, well of the British press said that. Concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. The British press said that. That conversation <laughs> I'm never going to share. What? Did Meghan ever mention they were racist? How dark his skin might be when he's born. The British press said that. I'm never going to share. What? Now here's some food for thought. Every single person on this planet who is expecting a child or who has had a child has at one point in time had a fun conversation about what that kid will look like. Will he have grandmother's dimples? Will he have dad's olive complexion? Or what about mom's blue eyes or Uncle Joe's pale white skin? These are healthy conversations. They're fun to have. There's nothing bigoted, racist, or vile about them. And now, all that blowback because of the trouble Scobie caused is on his head. Can you, hand on heart, look me in the eye and say it wasn't a publicity stunt? On my, on my life, on my family's life. It would be inaccurate to assume that I couldn't exactly not say that this or isn't almost partially incorrect. Talk about tempting fate. The man doesn't even seem to care about his family. But he just did what every other Hollywood person does. He pulled out a script and started an apology, non-apology tour. Omid revealed what we all could see crystal clearly, that he lied. The book's available in a number of languages, and unfortunately I can't speak Dutch, so I haven't seen the copy for myself, but if there have been any translation errors, I'm sure the publishers got it under control. Mm, really? Well, what he actually meant was that he had put the names in an earlier version of the manuscript. How do you mistranslate names in a book? They're either there or they're not. But well, what's really rich is that he blamed the Dutch publishers for it. That's like a skunk blaming the wind for its stink. 
And that very same smell is exactly what Hollywood sniffed when they decided to certify the wannabes as one of 2023's biggest losers. In 2020, the royal duo fled a life of ceremonial public service to cash in their celebrity status in the States. But after a whiny Netflix documentary, a whiny biography, and an inert podcast, the Harry and Meghan brand swelled into a sanctimonious bubble just begging to be popped. And South Park was the pin. Before we go on, let's give a big round of thanks to South Park for their service to humanity. Hey, you ever heard of a thing called privacy? The prince plays drums all day, don't even think he has a job. And I don't know what the hell she does. The good news is the Hollywood Reporter gave Meghan and Harry a gift that they can actually now celebrate. Even if it means being crowned one of the year's biggest losers, at least it's a title they earned. Tinseltown has their number now. Things aren't looking too rosy. When the only gig that William Morris can get Meghan is a free cameo spot in a sports commercial, her time with the company is coming to an end. Fired? What do you mean, fired? You're being let go, your department's being downsized, you're part of an outplacement. We're going in a different direction, we're not picking up your option, take your pick. How long can one of the world's top talent agents continue to pander to a wannabe royal without producing results before their public image is permanently trashed? Meghan Markle might be dropped by talent agency over Omid Scobie's bombshell book. Of course she's going to be fired. The only question now is when. See, the only thing that Scobie's book did was bring everything into focus. The Megan's brand is toast. No one wants to take swimming lessons from a shark, let alone from a couple that aired dirty family laundry, then sold them out, and then traded in on the royal titles that were gifted to them, all to chase this Hollywood fever dream of fame and to do so without any of the work ethic skills required. The only talent they have is to be able to scrape old used bubble gum from underneath theater seats. <laughs> Megan's not gonna be winning any awards with that bad performance. Yet another reason why her train to Tinseltown has been derailed. And another example of why the world keeps being fed a steady diet of these staged photo shoots from paparazzi in a parking lot. Now, why do I say staged photos? Well, take a look at the video that's been released online and compare it to a picture from the Daily Mail. Now, on that lonely walk of shame, anywhere do you see Megan lifting her arms or her knees that high where we could all notice it? Not once. So ask yourself, how many times did she have to stop, then pose for the pap to grab that snap? Once, twice, who knows? Only God knows. But one thing's for sure. These results that the Megans are suffering is exactly what I warned would happen months ago. That means the only thing they have to their name are their titles, their connections to royalty. So the closer that the Megans inch towards Hollywood stardom, the further away they go from the crown in people's eyes, which means eventually their castle is going to come crumbling down. As far as Hollywood is concerned, the pair are no longer a marketable brand. As far as Harry is concerned, he better grab the security blanket, a few pieces of expensive jewelry, maybe a couple of more private jet trips to the Caribbean, because Woko Mono just got a big reality check. Meghan Markle loses lucrative Dior deal to Princess Kate Middleton actress. Meg Bellamy, the actress who's playing the Princess of Wales on Netflix's series The Crown, just landed the very same Christian Dior deal that one particular hungry ego alert has been crowing about for months that she wanted more than life. See, what does that mean? That even Princess Catherine's shadow can defeat a wannabe without lifting a finger. You know, that one had to sting. It's like my granddad used to say. Karma may be late to the party sometimes, but she never forgets to collect a debt. Prince Harry must pay Daily Mail publisher over $60,000 after failed legal challenge. Right, okay, give me, give me a bit of background. So let's rewind. Harry has been suing the UK government for a while now, first to get his bodyguards back, and he's lost and appealed several times. Then he started suing newspapers, claiming that they were printing lies and wrecking his life. Well, finally, a common sense judge laid down the law and told Harry, guess what? It's time to pay the Piper pony up and give the cash over to the publishers of the Daily Mail. 
See, this is all about the Daily Mail had printed an article in 2022 claiming that Harry was trying to keep it secret from the public that he wanted to get his armed team of 10 men back, his whole entourage, to make him feel special. And the judge said, yeah, it wasn't a lie. What? In my opinion, the only reason the spoil sport wants to get his team back is so he can remind everybody that he's someone. So he can puff up his chest and turn to his spouse and go, see, we are special. But the other reason is because without them, he doesn't feel complete. But there's one more. See, Harry wants to have his IPP status returned to him. That's international protected persons like ambassadors get it, consuls, a few celebrities who also work with the government or the United Nations, and of course, royalty. And what that means is if he gets that status for him and Megan, is that any country that they visit, that government, meaning the taxpayer, you, will have to pay for their bodyguards. But also, theoretically, it gives him access to any intelligence that that particular country has on anyone about anything. Could you think of a more dangerous pair to have that ability? I can't. It's probably at the bottom of the list, but another reason why the royal family decided not to invite the couple to Sandringham for the Christmas holidays. King Charles to invite new faces to royal Christmas, but there'll be no Harry and Meghan. Now, many reporters disagree with the king's decision. I do not. They think it makes the crown look petty by not inviting the couple. The experts are 100% wrong, and here's why. It's simple. Right now, today, the Megan's currency in Hollywood is worthless. It's more devalued than the American dollar. The only chance they have to make a very short comeback in Hollywood, if they can do that, is if they return to the royal fold and just long enough so they can cut a few deals. Why would you want that to happen to them? Why would the king allow that, especially if he wants his son to return? Then just think of this also. What would Christmas at Sandringham with the royal family and the Megans look like? These people can't be trusted. Anything you say will end up in the newspaper headlines five minutes later. I mean, what are they going to talk about? They walk through the door and you go, hello, here are your rooms. Dinner is served. Good night. Goodbye. Don't let the door hit you with a good Lord split you. Remember who we're talking about. Remember what they have done. And most importantly, who they think they are. Meghan Markle felt she had more of a right to speak than Princess Kate Middleton because she was a self-made woman and seemed uncomfortable having to play second fiddle. The good news is that while the Megans can still claim to be famous because they live in the same neighborhood as Katy Perry and have the same trash pickup day as a celebrity singer, Princess Catherine and her children aren't running around hawking their names for fame. They're volunteering at a baby bank in Windsor. You can't fake a good heart. Its true nature shines through good days and bad, day and night. Now, for all of you who love movies out there, I have a big holiday surprise for you. I just reviewed the best movie of 2023. It is a true masterpiece, Godzilla Minus One. Now, before you look and go, oh my God, a monster movie. It is not a monster movie, trust me. It is a human movie about how to deal with the demons from your past, how to overcome obstacles, and how to live life. Go watch it, and if you get inspired, go take the entire family to see Godzilla Minus One, because today, great cinema is something truly rare and should be supported. If you enjoyed the video and you found value in it, hit the subscribe button, leave your thoughts in the comments down below of what you think the Megans are gonna plan next and share with everyone you know. To win every battle and stay true to yourself, all you have to remember is, we never bow down, we never bend the knee. Always forward.